you've got to have self-corrective conversations so that you can correct the things that you do that don't work. That's an important step. That's an important next step. You know, I've, I've recently discovered, well, recently, you know, two years ago when you get to my age, everything's recent because you can't remember what happened <laughs> <laughs> between the time you remembered and this very moment. Uh, you know, I find myself saying last week, kids will say, Ma, that was last year. Uh, oh, time is collapsing in the spiritual warp that we're in. But I discovered about myself that I was very addicted to and attracted to people who treated me badly. You know, because as a child I was treated badly. And you know, bad, uh, I got clear about the, the uh, physical abuse. Uh, being physically abused as a child, I spent nine years in a physically abusive marriage. I got clear about that. You understand? Nobody. Okay. Hello. Talk about take off your e earrings and get your Vaseline. Okay. If you even look like you're trying to think about raising your hand with me, we got a problem. Okay? Got that clear. The verbal abuse was a little more difficult to identify because I thought that. If you say something, I say something, you say something, I say something, you know, we going at it. I didn't recognize it in the process. I was abusing myself and being abused. So I, I learned, one of the steps that I learned in getting to the next point is really learning how to say what I need to say. Is it kind, is it loving, is it necessary? Is it kind, is it loving, if it's necessary? And if I can't line up with that, I just take a breath and really try to keep myself under wraps, you know? But I, I had an addiction to people who were treating me badly. And then the covert kind of stuff. Because there's a covert bad treatment. You know? And see, what I've learned is that if you care about me, and I tell you that something you're doing is disturbing me, and you continue to do it, I need to be clear that this ain't working. I don't care how fine you are how much money you got, what it is that you do for me, if I'm saying to you this behavior, this attitude, this language, this whatever, doesn't work for me and you continue to do it. Now, I, you know, I'm a loving soul, I'm a Virgo, you know, on the, on the border of being neurotic and crazy, just on the border, you know, I just go there for a drink and a tortilla, I don't stay down there <laughs> in crazy, <laughs> I do not stay in crazy. Crazy is not helpful. First of all, it gives you gray hair, okay? And it gives you like jowls and things. Crazy's not good. Crazy's really not good. I mean conscious crazy. I don't mean people with mental issues. But, um, you know, I, I'm on, so I'll give you a chance. In fact, I'll give you three. Because I'm gonna tell you once and make my request. You know, don't just tell people what you don't like. Please make a behavior change request. That's an important step. Make it of yourself and make it of others. Don't just get into the you don't and I don't and why do you and what do you do, but that is not helpful. And it doesn't work. Make a behavior change request. And, and I just want you to know, just in case you're thinking, it doesn't work with snoring. <laughs> because the person is asleep, they don't know they snoring. And mad at somebody because they snore. I would say put the pillow over their head, but that's not going to work. Uh, uh, murder, she wrote. <laughs> but tell the people what it is that you don't like. And me as a Virgo, that's what I'm going to do. And particularly since I became aware that I stay around people who treat me badly. So I tell them, this is, this is uh, what I want. Please, can we work this? And be willing to compromise, you know, give and take, compromise, compromise, yeah. And then once, they, once you tell them what they do and ask for what they, they're gonna do it again. Because chances are they're gonna forget. They're gonna forget and say, oh, oh, remember we talked about this. Remember I asked you not to, or when you, or how can, so, and I see you continuing to do it, so. You know, if this continues to happen, there's going to be a consequence. And the consequence is, announce your consequences. 
Don't be so willing to hold on to something that hurts you, that you just won't let it go and you'll stay in pain. So I said, okay, here's the consequence. You know, because I, this it's, doesn't honor me. It doesn't feel good to me. In order to take the next step to where you want to be, you've got to be willing to take a stand for yourself, within yourself. Speak up for yourself. Ask for the things that you want. And be willing, be willing, be willing for some people to say no. Everybody's not going to say no. You know, people's job is not to make you happy. I know that would be wonderful if this were Iyamlaville and all of you were Iyamlaites and I could just be happy, you know? So, but it, that's not it. So you, you, you've got to be willing to do that. Take that next step towards standing up for yourself. So th those things that are unconscious and habitual will begin to fade away. You've got to challenge them. So I had to really let go of a wonderful, lovely uh, relationship in my life because it just seemed that this person who said they cared about me wasn't willing to stop doing the thing that caused me hurt, harm, or pain. I love you, boo, and I love you when you go over there to your house and stay over there and t delete my email and my cell phone number from your phone so I can love you even more from a distance. <laughs> stay yourself over there. And challenge yourself. One of the next steps that we have to take is challenging ourselves to do what we think we can't, to do what we're afraid of doing, to do the very thing that people tell you you can't do. Challenge yourself. It's an important step, or you'll stay stuck in your head. Horrifying, terrifying. Everybody's got an Osama right up here. You let something happen and the terrorists will begin to rain up in the back of your mind and talk you right out of your best idea your best everything. It, it, you know, Bernice Reagan Johnson said, she said, we're so afraid to die till we won't take a stand. You're gonna die anyway. Why not stand up for what really matters to you? Why not? Take that step to challenge yourself, to move beyond where you think you can, to, 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 to say the thing that you think is really, really, really gonna piss somebody off. Sometimes when you stand up for yourself, you gotta piss people off. Because they want you to stay where you are to keep them comfortable. Take the next step! So you know what, we can really work this out. It doesn't have to be uh, upsetting, it doesn't have to be hard, but we need to be able to talk, and I need to be able to speak authentically to you. One of the other steps is, don't let people lie to you. Can I tell you something? Don't let people lie to you. You know when someone is being consciously dishonest with you. Call them on it. Invite them to tell you the truth. Invite them to tell you the truth. Let them know that you're grown enough and adult enough to handle it. This is an important step. As opposed to know that someone's being dishonest with you, follow them right along into the lion's mouth, put your foot in the lion's mouth, and then get mad at them when you get bit. Not helpful, not helpful. So, we've got some important things to do in the time coming up. I, I just encourage you, I encourage you, I implore you, get right in your spirit. Get right within yourself, with your source, your creator, I don't care what you call it. Get right in your culture as a person. Get right in, in your ancestral lineage so that you can begin to draw power from places beyond the physical. There are 100,000 angels waiting to take care of you and you're so busy doing it all that they're playing pinochle. <laughs> they don't have anything to do. Yeah? Get focused, get focused, get focused, get focused by telling the truth about where you are about identifying the game you're playing and the rules of the game, yeah? And don't stop along the way to keep reminding yourself of what ain't working, of what you can't do, of what you don't have, or what was done to you. Don't blame and project on people for the stuff that you were too afraid to do for yourself. Can you hear me? Get clear about what doesn't work in your life. Whether it's overeating, overspending, oversleeping, not sleeping enough. Just get clear about what doesn't work. And don't do that. 
Surround yourself with people, with people, friends, loved ones, family, that tell you the truth about who you are. I want somebody to tell me, girl, that dress is, your butt is too big for that dress. You need to take that off and go somewhere. And don't put no darn jeggings on either. You know you ain't supposed to have no jeggings on. <laughs> you need to spank that butt, girl, you know. I, <laughs> I want somebody to tell me the truth. Let people tell you the truth. Let people tell you the truth. But most of all, remember the truth that God told you. God said, fear not, I am with you. God said, you may run, but you won't get weary. And when you walk, you will not faint. God said, no, ye not that you are the temple of the living God and the living God is within you. I want for you, my beloved, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Remember the promises, it's an important step. Take time each day to get grounded, centered, and connected. If you could just do that, God gives you 24 hours a day. Could you give God seven minutes? Just seven minutes. To begin taking that step, that inner journey to peace that can't be disturbed by anything that goes outside. People say, oh, you've been through a lot. You've been through a lot. You've been through a lot of young Oh, you've been, I said, but you know what? All the time I knew I had Teflon on my booty. Because I pray because I believe, because I had people who prayed with me and for me, because I had people who loved me, not because I wrote a book or because I was on a television show, but because they just loved me. Make sure your life is filled with love and don't abuse it. Don't take it for granted. You know, one of the many things that Jumia taught me that I didn't learn until after her death was that there were days, many days, when I took her love for granted. You know, she was my child and I just thought she would love me. But there were days when I took her for granted. I don't do that with my son anymore. I don't do that with my grandchildren. I don't do that with my students, with my friends, with people who love me. I don't take it for granted. Here's a very important step. The final one I want to give you for the evening. This is, this is so, so important. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how bad you feel. You gotta have one thing, one thing. Just one, it don't have to be big. Just one something that brings you joy. I wanna tell you what it is for me. Ooh, it's orgasmic. <laughs> Sunday. Brawless. <laughs> Watching movies on the Lifetime Movie Network and Ironing Pillowcases. <laughs>